Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, welcome back. In our previous lecture, we are discussing about center of pressure, aerodynamic center and the relationship between them. And we also witnessed how CL varies with angle of attack and how can we model mathematically CL, a CL variation with alpha, right? So we had CL is equals to CL naught plus CL alpha into alpha. This corresponds to variation of lift coefficient with angle of attack in the linear regime of angle of attack. Right? So, at the same time we have defined two important uh, parameters. Right? One is aerodynamic center, the other one is center of pressure. So, center of pressure is a point about which resultant aerodynamic forces act, right? And aerodynamic center, so about center of pressure, the pitching moment is 0, right? XCP and aerodynamic center is defined as the point about which pitching moment remains constant with angle of attack, right? So let us now consider an inner foil and say XAC is the distance of aerodynamic center with respect to the leading edge and XCP is the length of this center of pressure, right? The, the location of center of pressure with respect to leading edge here. Right? Now, let us take the moment, let O be the leading edge here and we are going to write a moment, we are going to derive the moment expression about this point O for this particular airfoil, right? Say, we are testing it at certain alpha, right? So, let, let us consider this, uh, there is a flow with a velocity v infinity over this aerofoil. Now, the pitching moment about point O is equals to, about point O is equals to, so when there is a flow, there is lift here and drag, and there is lift and drag and moment about aerodynamic center, right? Now, let us consider the moment about point O by considering the aerodynamic center here, by considering the forces and moments acting at aerodynamic center. So, moment about aerodynamic center minus x aerodynamic center into lift, this equals to Cm, this equals to Cm AC minus x bar AC into Cl, where m is equals to half rho v square s c bar into c m and l is equals to half rho v square s into c l and x bar a c is equals to x a c divided by c bar, right? Now, if you take the moment about the same reference point, but by considering the forces acting at the center of pressure. So, what we have is only the moment due to, since center of pressure is, a defi is defined as the point about which the resultant aerodynamic forces act, right? So, the moment that, so we are considering only the moment contribution from lift because the drag, uh, this is along the same axis, the drag contribution is very, very less here. So, we are neglecting drag here. And so, due to lift, we have a pitch down moment here. So, XCP momentum multiplied by, since it is a uh, non-dimensional coefficient, we will also have C bar into C L, which is equals to minus X bar C P into C L. So, these two equations So, 
so these two equations represent the moment about point o due to lift right so this the moment should be equal whether either you are considering with respect to aerodynamic center or center of pressure right by equating those two what we have x bar ac or x bar cp is equals to x bar ac minus cm ac divided by cr so this is the relationship between center of pressure and aerodynamic center we also address that at higher angles of attack the cl increases right due to which this quantity becomes very low and this x center of pressure will move more close towards aerodynamic center now let us take a small example so let us take up an example a naka 2412 airfoil is tested in a low speed wind tunnel it is observed that the pitching moment coefficient about the leading edge at zero lift is minus 0.02 also at alpha is equal to 8 degrees the cl is measured to be 0.7 and cm about leading edge is minus 0.2 now we have to find the aerodynamic center for this airfoil right now given cm about leading edge at cl is equals to 0 is minus 0.02 right so we know from this equation so moment about leading edge say here is cm ac cl is 0 right it is mentioned cl is 0 and the moment measured to be minus 0.02 which turns out to be the moment about aerodynamic center right let us say this is our leading edge and this is my aerodynamic center let this distance be x ac so v infinity and alpha will have lift and moment about aerodynamic center now if i write an equation for pitching moment about aerodynamic center right about this leading edge with respect to this aerodynamic center what we have is cm is equals to cm about leading edge is equals to cm about aerodynamic center minus x bar ac into cl right so it is mentioned here that at cl is 0 the cm is measured to be minus 0.02 that means the cm ac is minus 0.0 this implies cm ac is equals to minus 0.02 and another information we have here we have here is at alpha is equals to 8 degrees right cl is equals to 0.7 and cm is equals to cm at about leading edge is equals to minus 0.2 so from the same equation from the same equation we have cl and the at alpha 8 degrees we have cl and the corresponding cm right can we substitute this to minus 0.2 is equals to cm ac is minus 0.02 minus x ac x bar ac into what is cl 0.7 x bar ac is equals to Minus zero point zero two plus point two divided by point seven, right? That is zero point two five seven one. So x x bar AC is point two five seven one. X bar is a non-dimensional number, right? So what we have is x ac is equals to 0.2571 of c bar right this equals to 25% of c bar right or almost quarter chord of this c bar 
right so the aerodynamic center in general lies for a low speed uh, for low speed flight vehicles the aerodynamic center in general lies at about 22 to 26% of mean aerodynamic cone c bar right and also it is worth noting that the center of pressure keep varying with angle of attack why you have cl keep changing here from this equation at the same time you know as the angle of attack changes the pressure distribution changes right and once you have different pressure distribution you have different centroid further distribution so xcp keeps varying whereas xcc remains constant for over a range of velocities and uh, of course angle of attack it always remains constant right so till now we are talking about air foils let us say if i extrude this aerofoil what you have is wing right okay. so aerofoil is also known as infinite wing or two dimensional wing right so this is a 3d object whereas airfoil well is 2d right or also termed as infinite wing okay now since it's a 3d object it is worth talking about its planform geometry so let us talk about wing geometry assume that this is an aircraft okay so we have a wing here and we have a horizontal stabilizer right now what in general we assume is this wing extends till the central line of this let us say this is my central line or fuselage reference line right so wing extend till the central line Right. now when you have when you are measuring the planform geometry planform is a top view of this right top view of the wing when you are measuring the planform geometry that means if you want to check the length of this wing which is which we call here is as span right span is a lateral length of this wing right this is a lateral direction this is span which is measure, which is a length measured from tip to tip you call this as tip of the wing you call this as root right now let me just erase the fuselage so this 
what you have here is a root and the longitudinal length of this aerofoil will be say what is longitudinal length length in this direction right so what will be the longitudinal length is it nothing but the cross sectional length at that particular point so what do you have at this cross section is an aerofoil so you measure aerofoil in terms of chord the longitudinal length of this aerofoil is chord so the longitudinal length of wing also at that particular location is a chord right so the one that is present at the root is known as root chord and at the tip we have tip chord so let us consider ct be the tip chord and cr be the root chord right and you have a span right which is the distance length between the length measured between tip and tip tip, uh, tip to tip of this wing right at the same time you have area here area of the wing let s be the area of the wing b be the span cr is the root chord ct be the tip chord right now let us talk talk about some of the non dimensional parameters here of the wing we define something called aspect ratio which is b square by s right there is no dimension for this and for a delta wing configurations right so this aspect ratio will be usually we will be less than 3 or 4 or 5 let us say we call them as low aspect ratio wings and a sail plane from 8 to 16 and for a glider it will be beyond 16 right and aspect ratio is b square by s here and taper ratio lambda let us denote taper ratio as lambda this is aspect ratio lambda is taper ratio see what are we tapering we are tapering the chord when you are reducing the chord we witness that the maximum thickness and everything will reduce right you are scaling down in fact right you are you will be reducing the yeah chord length here when you say taper you are trying to reduce the chord length as we move along the span of this wing so taper ratio lambda is ct by cr right when we mention taper ratio are we missing anything do we need some other information do we require any additional information or when we talk about a taper is this lambda sufficient enough or do we require any other information so as far as i am concerned see let us consider this pointer right so you see the radius is uh, it is conical conical in shape right and the diameter here is large compared to the top tip yeah definitely because you have a for a cone uh, you have a bigger base and a smaller tip right now you see it has been i mean the diameter has been reduced but the reduction has happened about a particular axis right it is for this particular stick for this particular pointer it happened about the longitudinal axis right longitudinal axis of this pointer but for a wing what are the possibilities so if you look at here what you can see is it is tapered about trailing edge right that means your trailing edge of each and every aerofoil are in the same location right or in the same straight line here they are tapered i mean it is so the wing is tapered about trailing edge okay so what you require is axis for taper axis about which this taper you are tapering the wing right axis for taper
Yeah. And now let us consider a classical or a rectangular wing. So, so what do you mean by rectangular wing? At each and every point you have equal chord, right? So let this be C, right? So what will be the aspect ratio of a rectangular wing? For a rectangular wing, aspect ratio is equals to B square by S is equals to B square by B into C in B by C. B by C is the aspect ratio. So what will be the taper ratio? Lambda here is C T and C R are same. So C T by C R is equals to 1. So let us consider another case. Is a triangular wing or a delta wing. Right? So, what is the tip chord in this case? This is CR. What is CT? Is 0. For a delta wing or a pure tri or a triangular wing, we have lambda is equals to 0. Right? So, the lambda varies from 0 to 1. Right? Okay. Now we have this rectangular wing. Okay. Let us assume about some point we are trying to rotate this wing. Understand? Rotate this two halves. About this point we are trying to rotate, give a rotation. So initially, say, you have a rectangular wing, right? So about this point, you are trying to rotate this wing. What happens? Am I correct? It almost looks look like this, right? What you have done is you have rotated by an angle about some reference point, right? If you take this rotation about leading edge, or in general, this angle is known as sweep back angle or sweep swept wing is swept. Sweep angle. So, if you sweep it forward, it is sweep forward, and if you push it, if you rotate the wings backward, then it is sweep back angle, right? Capital omega. So, this is the leading edge, you have leading edge sweep, and if you sweep about trailing edge, you will have trailing edge sweep, about quarter point, quarter chord, you will have quarter chord sweep. Similarly, taper you have you will have it about quarter chord taper or mid chord taper or trailing edge taper. Like the aerofoils here will be say if this is if this is my V infinity, the aerofoils will be the chord of this aerofoils will be aligned with the flow. But right now what happens is a component so they, if this is V infinity, then whatever the aerofoils will face is a phase that generates lift is V infinity cos omega, right? So usually swept is essential when you are uh, traveling at high speeds, right? To delay the Mach number, 
Mach number on the airfoil, right? Although with, with respect to ground, you will be traveling at a higher Mach number, but the airfoil sees a lower Mach number, right? That we will discuss as we progress. And this is a sweep, right? At the same time, when there is sweep, there can also be a taper, right? It doesn't mean that only sweep, uh, I mean, uh, only rectangular wings are swept. You, you can also sweep the tapered wings. We also have something called dihedral, right? Okay. So let us say this is your actual wings level attitude. This is the front view, right? You have propeller here mounted on the nose. This is a front view, right? Now, let us say this is my wings level attitude. So the angle made by the wings with this level attitude is known as dihedral. So we'll see why we need sweep and what is dihedral, why we, why we require. Right. What are the conditions when which uh, during which you have to use the dihedral for a wing? Okay. Now coming back to this planform geometry. So say this is your root chord. Okay. Now so this is your wing. Say if the aerofoil here. So the aerofoil here, say the same aerofoil we are using, if it is rotated with respect to this root chord, okay. So the aerofoil which is present at this particular section is rotated with respect to this. If the wing has aerofoils which are with different orientation, right, you can have a constant twist or a variable twist wing, right. So as you as you progress along the span of this wing, you can ha you can actually orient aerofoils at different angles, right? What we call that as twist. So you call this as twist, which is by geometry, right? You are not changing the aerofoil, you are using the same aerofoil and you are rotating it. You call it as geometric twist. Okay. So let us say I am not giving any physical or physical twist, but say if I change another, if I change airfoil, right? At the root chord, I'll be using one airfoil, and as I progress along the span, I'll be changing the airfoil itself. Although I am not giving any twist, but the shape that once you look at the shape, right? Because the air, when you change the airfoil, the upper surface and lower surface coordinates changes, right? With respect to root chord, it will be of different thickness and all. So that gives you a aerodynamic twist. You are changing the aerodynamic characteristics of the wing as you progress along the span. So this is geometric twist. So aerodynamic twist is like you use. Here I may, I may use a symmetric aerofoil. And here I may use symmetric aerofoil or another type of aerofoil with different thickness, right? So ultimately you are changing the aerodynamic, by changing this aerofoil you are actually changing the aerodynamics along the span. So this particular twist, although it is not a physical twist, but from the geometry it looks as if the wing is twisted. So this particular twist is known as aerodynamic twist. So as far as the wing is concerned, if you slice, slice it, right, at different locations, what you have is an aerofoil. The structural name for this particular aerofoil is a rib, right? So you'll have ribs and you'll have spars that connect these ribs. And to cover this skeleton, this forms the skeleton of the wing. And to cover this skeleton, we'll have skin, right? So instead of making a solid wing, will will be trying uh, the whole idea is to design a wing which can 
which can have equal strength or sufficient strength right by making it as hollow as possible so let us look look at one of the uh, wings of uh, uav that we are going to develop yes friends what you are looking at is a 4 meter span wing that we are going to develop for a uav right it's a scale down config scale down wing uh, so the actual scale turns out to be 16 meters around the span of the actual scale right so you can see at different locations we have ribs here right uh, i'll request one of my researcher to come here to help me out mr himanshu can you please help me yeah. if you can hold i can explain better i guess right so it's a twin boom uav where uh, the tail horizontal tail will ultimately end up landing uh, like uh, resting on these two booms right, which are extending from the wing and what you have here is ribs right and most of at most of the places we have removed the material to optimize the weight and you have spars here so these are the carbon fiber tubes that you can see here and at some places we have also covered with the skin right so this is the covered part of it you can see so and yeah it is tapered right you you can see that the wing is tapered see the taper right so you can see the thickness also reduces along the span uh, i thought this will be a bit interesting for you so i got it in between the fabrication right i stopped them uh, so you can give, give it back to them right okay so coming back to the planform geometry now as we can see from the root to tip the chord is varying but in all the moments and uh, while considering the moments we we are considering some reference length right in case of pitching moment we are considering it as the chord right for an aerofoil but what happens which which length we need to consider for a wing when when it is getting tapered right when i mean tapered the chord is varying the length of the chord is varying along the span now there is something called mean aerodynamic chord right mac c bar right so what is this mean aerodynamic chord instead of this entire wing i can represent this wing by means of a straight line for the purpose of analysis right so let us say if i want to replace this entire wing right all i can represent this by means of a straight line which is c bar of the wing okay and why because to represent what ultimately we have to represent the wing in terms of lift drag and moment right so this and we witnessed that we represented lift drag and pitching moment about the aerodynamic center similarly if i know the chord and the corresponding aerodynamic center right that is good enough for me to represent the entire wing okay now let us see how to find the mean aerodynamic chord as well as the aerodynamic center of this wing right so the units are meters here right general units are meters so you have root chord and you have tip chord so let us say cr or c bar or uh, the mean aerodynamic chord is given by 2 third cr into 1 plus lambda plus lambda square divided by 1 plus lambda where lambda is equals to ct by cr right so this is like once you do that then you will end up getting a mean aerodynamic chord on either side which is symmetric in case of a fixed wing aircraft right now what you have to do is project this mean aerodynamic chord onto the root right onto the root chord or the fuselage reference line or the center line here right so and we witness that like this me the aerodynamic center lies at the 25% of this c bar 
mean error dynamic code. Right? So now for a rectangular wing, let us say, what is c bar is equals to c or c root. Right? So what is lambda? So 1, 1, 2 by 3 into c r into 3 by 2. This becomes for rectangular wing. C bar is equals to C R is equals to C T. Right? You can verify verify this from this equation. And where? So what is the distance for this? What is the distance at which this C bar is located? Right? Or span wise distance? So y y of M A C. So if I want to know what is the y location or the span wise location of this C bar, we have y MAC is a span wise location of mean error dynamic chord is b by 6 into 1 plus 2 lambda by 1 plus lambda. So with the help of these equations, we will be able to find the C bar of a given V and 25 percent of this C bar is a aerodynamic center. So, how to find aerodynamic center of wing? It's like twenty five percent of M A C mean aerodynamic cost measured from leading edge. measured from leading edge of C bar. Find find the aerodynamic center of the following UABs, right? So in the first, in the first place, let us consider a pure delta ring. Let this be span be two meters and root chord be one meter. Right? So how to find the mean aerodynamic chord? This is let us say this is my mean aerodynamic chord. So C bar is given by two third C R into one plus lambda plus lambda square by 1 plus lambda. What happens? What is CR? 1 meter into what is lambda? Lambda for this delta wing is 0 by 1, right? CT by CR, that is 1, right? So 2 in 2 by 3 is how much? Point six seven meters. So point six seven meters is your mean aerodynamic chord, right? So what exactly a delta wing is here for a low speed? Assuming that there is no actual sweep here, so it is actually a tapered about trailing edge. The wing tapered about the trailing edge. So generally to construct this, what happens? No. Usually if there is a sweep, right, you will take a component of this, you will project that aerofoil along the flow and you will take that aerofoil as a rib to construct your wing. Okay. So but in this case, but the low speed flows that we are talking, we are not going to give any sweep, right. Consider so you can consider in this course this delta wing whenever we discuss it can be a wing tapered about the trailing edge. 
right? In most of the cases, otherwise, if I uh, otherwise mentioned, it is like tapered about trailing edge. Yeah. Now, since it is tapered about trailing edge, what I can do? I can project directly because the trailing edge remains same. So this becomes my C bar. So 25% of the C bar is? So MAC, like aerodynamic center, is equals to 20, uh, uh, 1 by 4th of C bar is equals to 0 0.67 by 4.16. So this aerodynamic center that we got is with respect to the leading edge here which is located at a distance of 0.167 meters, right? And what is this distance? CR minus C bar, right? So let us say if this is my XAC aerodynamic center, right? So XAC is equals to CR minus C bar CR minus C bar will give you this length and plus 25 percent of C bar that is 0 0.25, 0 0.25 C bar. Right. So what you get here is 67 is and from 1 meter it is like 33, 0.33, 33 centimeters plus 16 centimeters. 49.7, 49.7 centimeters or 0 0.4, point approximately 0 0.5 meters. So the aerodynamic center lies at a distance of 0 0.5 meters from the nose of this delta wing. 